Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bull Ring. I'm Alan Dietz, along with America's short track sweetheart herself, Jess Ballard. <laughs> and, yeah, and our show is presented by our friends at Bickles Bond Voyage. Remember, you can go to mymmtravel.com. Uh, get your reservations now for that cruise. It'll be January 2024, and it's going to be a ton of fun. Rich Bickle and friends. Uh, and a racetrack. And a racetrack on on the boat. So that's going to be something you're definitely going to want to check out. We appreciate them being with us, as well as our guests today, including Jonathan Davenport, who will talk about his opportunity this weekend at Bristol. Dylan Fetcho coming off a win at Nashville. Mark Wimberly with Making Memories Travel. Josh Berry after a strong run in the Cup Series at Richmond. And Tim Bryant will get us ready for five flags coming up on Friday. And the alliteration continues. You poor thing. Oh, yeah. Well, we're getting through it. Uh, how are you? Great. Yeah? Um, You really stacked this show. Oh, it's a pretty good show. Well, you have been for the last few weeks. But I just wanted to point out that we have two short trackers that are making cup starts. Well, you know... Now that you mentioned that, I think it's a good point to to bring up. If you look at this past weekend, too, we know what Kyle Larson's done, you know, with midgets, sprint cars, and dirt lake models. He wins on Sunday. Carson Hosevar, friend of the yes. show, finally got his first Crash yes. Control Series win. And Chandler Smith. Yes. Another friend of the show got his first NASCAR Xfinity Series win. So it was a it was a big win for all of our dreamers out there watching. A hundred percent. And I feel like everyone that we mentioned, Josh Berry finishing mm -hmm. second, yep. um, they are representing a whole community of racers from multiple different disciplines. And it's just Makes you feel so good to see him in victory lane and it get does. these opportunities. It does. Well, you know, that wasn't the only racing this weekend. No. Let's go to the highlights. Let's go <laughs> to the highlights. Season opener at Nashville on Saturday. First off, limited late models on the quarter mile. There was a caution right off the bat. And then there were more cautions. But the steady was Kevin Rollins, who led flag to flag for the win. Pro late models hate to sound like a broken record, but Dylan Fetcho holds off Hunter Wright for the win on Sunday. The Force Compact Touring Series uh, visiting Shady Bowl for their first race of the season. Defending champion Chris Jennings takes the win. And in the CRA Street Stock Division at Shady Bowl, Blaine Aiken was the winner. And then, I don't know if you saw it or not, but uh, Sunday afternoon, evening, Northwest Super Late Model Series at Tri-City. They've done all that work there to get that racetrack repaired after the big windstorm. I thought it looked great from what we could see early on. Hayden, Hayden Plybon, excuse me, while leading, uh, spins, got collected with a, a lap car that spun in front of him. Last lap, here they go, down the back straightaway. Casey Klein gets into the back of Jonathan Gomez. Gomez goes around. Casey Klein is penalized, and the win Ends up going to the driver who took the white flag running third, and that was Kyle Telstra. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy, no doubt about it. And I'll tell you what else is kind of crazy. Dirt late model superstar Jonathan Davenport. He's going to be racing on the dirt at Bristol, but in a cup car and in a truck. And when we come back, we're going to talk to him. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety, providing the most advanced driver safety products to NASCAR, IndyCar, Sprint Cars, and Sports Cars drivers. From grassroots to professional racers, HMS Motorsport has over 25 years experience outfitting drivers with the best gear on the market. Equipped with first-hand product knowledge, our experts are ready to help you select the best harness belts, seats, head restraints, helmets, and racing attire for your type of racing. HMS is even the exclusive importer for Schrode belts, shoe Schubert helmets, and Valero base layers. Visit one of our stores in Mooresville, North Carolina, or Danvers, Massachusetts. Or check us online at hmsmotorsport.com, where you can learn the details of our products and order online. Safety starts here. Racing returns to the legendary Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. The 49th running of the Icebreaker. See past super late bottles hit the track it's one of the area's oldest modified traditions, the Icebreaker. 
paying $10,000 to win for the ground pounding modified. It's the 49th annual icebreaker at Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. And you can watch it all only on Racing America. Hey gang, join Scott Hanson, myself, and a host of other drivers on what will be the largest short track party at sea. Sail Eastern Caribbean on the Norwegian Iron Court January 7th to the 14th of 2024. Enjoy unlimited drinks, a special question and answer session, and have a chance at racing Scott and myself on the go Prairie track. Call Mark at Memories Travel at 262-527-1341 or visit mymmtravel.com and click on the link to Bickle's Bon Voyage link for information. Hi everybody, I'm DJ Shaw and you're watching Racing America. Welcome back to the Bull Ring with Jess and Alan. Of course, one of the big stories that everybody's been talking about the last few weeks is uh, Dirt Late Model Superstar Jonathan Davenport and his Cup Series debut this weekend at Bristol. Then we find out that he's also going to race in the Truck Series race on Saturday. Jonathan's joining us now. and uh, Jonathan, congratulations on this opportunity. Well, thank you. I, I greatly appreciate it. It feels like it's been a long time coming, but... Uh... I'm I'm happy it's here and uh, great to be doing it with uh, obviously um, Collie Motorsports and uh, Spire Motorsports with uh, my longtime supporter Nutrient Ag on board for for both races. Now, is that how this all kind of came about? Because I know that was a mutual sponsor that that you and and Collie shared. Uh, yes, you know, through uh, Nutrient Ag Solutions, they, they've been a supporter of mine for five or six years now. So uh, I've got a, a great guy there with um, Steve Martin and loves dirt track racing, loves short track racing, um, lo loves just about any kind of racing. So we uh, we all get along really good. Me and him have a great friendship, no less a partnership um, through our race team with Lance Landers Motorsports. So that's that's how it started a uh, conversation. He had this great idea to, uh, to try to get me in, uh, in a cup car or in a Xfinity car or something. And, uh, so they, they went to work on it last October and, um, seemed to work out pretty good so far. I mean, this is such a treat to have these. We're going to talk to Josh, Josh Berry later on in the show, another short track racer that was given a awesome opportunity these are the stories that are just so fun to follow. It gets the fans so excited. And who doesn't love like a like an underdog story? Right. Although I'm not sure that we can consider you an underdog on the on the dirt. But. Yeah, you're gonna be going a lot slower in the cup car at Bristol, so right. you should have it made, right? Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh I don't know. I I'd say I'm probably still an underdog for sure. You know, if uh if my dirt experience was that far superior than everybody in their own cars and the cup cars and probably Kyle Larson and Christopher Bell were to lap the field. So, and, 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 you know, Ricky Stenthouse is really good on dirt too. So, uh, I don't know if my, like I said, my experience on dirt, I don't think trumps the, uh, the experience everybody else has in the cup car, but I'm excited to learn and, uh, hopefully my learning curve won't be, be too long and uh, we can, uh, go straight forward and, uh, hopefully get a good showing for nutrient ag, uh, Camaro. I mean, you've competed on some really big stages in the dirt world, but what are you most excited about experiencing now on this level? I don't really know that I, I'm looking towards one thing that I'm excited about. I'm, I'm, I'm just excited about the whole deal. Um, I'm excited for my, my family, really, you know, how much they've sacrificed for years and years and years uh, of uh, seeing me run around the short tracks all across America and what my mom and dad have, uh, have give up to uh, let me live my dream. And so it's finally come, come back around full circle and uh, I'm finally getting to do what I wanted to do. Um, you know, when I was a, a, a teenager and uh, I, I thought those days had done past me uh, long ago, but um, nutrient ag, uh, you know, made it happen. You know, um, the first time I remember seeing you race is when you were driving that silver 49 and it was in the, the early two thousands and to go from that, to winning a million dollars at Eldora last year in the dream. I mean, t 
two million dollars last year in a dirt late model i don't think we could have ever imagined that uh 15 or 20 years ago no you probably couldn't but there 15 20 years ago there wasn't as many big races as they are um nowadays so last year was the the schedule was just flooded with forty thousand, fifty thousand to win and uh that's the way we we set up our whole year was just to run for the the, the big money and Tried to uh, not use up our equipment on the five and ten thousand races. We we missed a lot of those, and when we would run those, we would go and just primarily just test for the bigger races. So um, I love it when a plan comes together, and uh, I don't know if that'll ever be repeated or not. But uh, sure hope that we can live up to those expectations for a couple of years to come. Now, you know, I think about. Uh, the limited opportunities people like uh, Freddie Smith and Buck Simmons and, and Jack Pennington had in, in cup cars or what were Bush cars then. Jeff Purvis had some pretty good opportunities. But you've got to feel like anybody, not just a late model driver, but anybody that drives on dirt is kind of riding with you this weekend. Yeah, I definitely feel uh, you you know, that weight on my shoulders a little bit, but, uh, I try not to dwell on it much. Um, I'm sure the whole dirt world is going to be watching her most of them. And, um, you know, maybe it'll, it, it'll unite a whole lot of dirt fans and asphalt fans. And, uh, maybe it'll go vice versa back which way. And, uh, maybe it'll be both be good for both of our sports, dirt and asphalt. Well, I think it will be. And just like I texted you yesterday, uh, you know, so many grassroots racers are proud and happy for you. Um, do good, but have fun this week. I know you're going to run a late model on Thursday night. I think you said over it at volunteer. Um, a lot of folks will be watching, but the most important thing is to have fun. Well, I definitely appreciate it. Yeah. That, that's a, that's the main focus is to have fun and just, uh, make the most out of this opportunity that I got, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say this one dirt race is what's going to, uh, you know, make or break my career or really put a, a stamp on how I good how good of a dirt racer I am. Cause, uh, you know, these are totally different cars from the cup car to the truck. So it's going to be learning two different deals in, in one weekend. You know, it's like taking an asphalt driver and taking them to Eldora and <laughs> letting them run a late model and a sprint car in the same weekend and yeah. go back and back and forth. So it's, it's two totally different cars that I'm, I'm going to have to learn and uh, just a whole different kind of, of driving and racing, you know, that, and, and boys race a little different than what we do and just how I have to move around for the air. And, um, you know, obviously I know how the, the dirt changes and where the grit goes and things like that. But like I said, just, just going to have fun with it and uh, I'm going to do the best I can and represent uh, my team and my sponsors and my family as best as can. And, uh, you know, hopefully we got something to uh, smile about at the end of the day. I think you will. Congratulations and good luck this weekend. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Thanks for having me on. And uh, we'll see everybody Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Bristol. That's right. Jonathan Davenport, he's going to be one to watch. Hey, when you go to Nashville, Dylan Fitch is one to watch as well. He's going to join us when we come back. The secret is, it's quicker. Griffith is going to sweep the weekend. PFC Brakes, more championships than any other. From late models to modifieds on pavement and dirt, with at-track service like no other. Success means no compromises. Fourth lap of win for Ty Majeski. Lighter, stiffer, cooler, quicker. PFC Brakes, the secret is, it's quicker. Five Star Bodies, the most advanced bodies on the market. Aerodynamically engineered, manufactured from the highest grade and lightest weight materials. Tested tough for optimum performance. The highest quality and most durable products you'll find anywhere. Our products help racers around the world reach victory lane. Winning never looked so good. Faster, lighter, stronger, better. Five Star. Grassroots Racing returns to New Hampshire Motor Speedway on Saturday, April 15th. It's the Northeast Classic. See top short track racing stars from the past Super Late Models, American Canadian Tour Late Models, Tour Type Modifieds, 
Street Stocks and Mini Stocks as they all take on the Magic Mile. It's the Northeast Classic at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, Saturday, April 15th, and you can watch it all only on Racing America. Yeah, well, I think it all kind of helps. Um, I think the cup stuff helps the dirt stuff. The dirt stuff helps the, the cup stuff. I, I don't really view it as um, anything other than it's all just helping each other out. So uh, just me being behind the wheel a lot um, and put myself in racing situations and frustrating situations sometimes, um, challenging myself to, to be better allows me to get better. So. Um, just getting, getting all that experience I think helps. Um, I think the dirt stuff really helps get my restarts and stuff a lot better in cup just because you know, the races are so short um, that you have to be attacking all the time. So, um, and then I think on the flip side of that, I think the, the NASCAR stuff helps the, the patient side of things and staying calm and stuff like that. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Bull Ring presented by Bickles Bon Voyage. <laughs> Check. Every time, every time. Well, hopefully you were lucky enough to join us this weekend for our coverage of the season opener from Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. They were so efficient, it was over not much long after they started i mean they just ran through the program that quickly well you never <laughs> see that in asphalt racing no, no. pavement racing excuse me no so a, a lot of places you don't but at nashville you do and just about as fast as they went through that program was dylan fecho defending his championship in the pro late models at nashville taking the win dylan thanks for joining us and congratulations well, i appreciate it thanks for having me on here again yeah, I mean, I feel like we can just replay the two or three times we had you on last year because um, you really have taken off where you left off in 2022. Yeah, for sure. We uh, had a really good year last year. And honestly, the beginning of this year, traveling didn't go very good. We had some bad luck happen to us. Um, so I was glad to start off the season right at Nashville. Um. I'm so happy to have one of you members of like the Nashville mafia mm -hmm. uh, on because I have a question that I hope you have the answer to who <laughs> runs the late model memes account. I know it's someone from Nashville. Do you have the answer? I really don't have the answer, but oh, I, I I, you're lying. <laughs> no, I really don't know. I'm not sure. But I think it is somebody from Nashville, so. He just gives you, or or she gives you or Nashville it. drivers a, a lot of love. So I, I'm just yeah. assuming. Okay, well, when you find out, we'll have you on the show just for that so you can yeah, make the news. Just to reveal. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> do, you, do you have any other questions? No, I do have <laughs> racing related. That was a racing related question. Yeah, it was. Um, we talked about last week how, you know, we have all these great tracks around the country where there's great local racing, but Nashville, like people who aren't from the area will follow along the weekly series mm -hmm. and, and the championships because the racing is so good. And, you know, a lot of those names go on to, you know, compete in, in the bigger shows across the country. And in your opinion, what do you think the reason for that is that there's such a spotlight on, on Nashville's local racing? Uh, I think it just has to do with the history of the racetrack. Honestly, it's just a it's a track that everybody loves, and even if you haven't been there, it's a track that everybody wants to go to. So uh, it's just always been a place for uh, good racing. Well, you know, one of the things uh, we're trying to do this year, and I honestly wish we'd done it in years past, is highlight uh, some of the quarter mile racing too, which we saw in the highlights <laughs> earlier today from the limited late models, and we'll do that through the year. Uh, changing the, the, uh, topic just a little bit this weekend, uh, first Allen Turner pro late model race of the season at five flag speedway on Friday night You can watch it here on racing America. If you can't join, you're the defending champion down there. What are your expectations heading into 23 at five flags? Yeah. Uh, like you said, we got the championship last year, but we never got a win. So that's my biggest, uh, biggest goal this year is to get a win down there 
Uh, we were just really consistent last year, and that's what got us the championship. So hopefully we can just get that first win. What else is um, on the bucket list for this year? Uh, just all of Nashville, Pensacola, and then – so we ran Montgomery their first race, so we'll try to hit all those. Not sure yet, but that's the goal right now. And is is the expectation still to to eventually build to, to doing more super late model races and eventually maybe just super late model races? Yeah, I think so. Um, we've been running the pros for a long time, so I would definitely like myself to be in a super and just run super stuff. But if we did that, we'd probably have to shorten up our races and just run – probably eight to 10 races a year. So eventually we'll probably end up doing that. Well, I think you will uh, do very well in super late models whenever you do make that move. Congratulations on the win this past weekend. Good luck at five flags. And, uh, I'm sure we'll have another interview that looks and sounds a lot like this <laughs> very soon. Well, I hope so. Thank y'all. <laughs> All right. That's Dylan Fetcho now a two time track champion at Nashville fairground speedway and, he, you know, Christopher Tullis was there a couple of years ago. Was kind of the guy to beat in pro late models, and and I think Dylan may be in that position now. You know, when you can win at the Baby Rattler last year and go down to Pensacola, win at Nashville, now go to the Show Me the Money series. He's kind of established himself in that same light for sure, and he's become one of those names that you look for on the entry list for these these bigger races and you're hearing all the time here on racing america and on the broadcast so he's he's definitely establishing a name for himself yes i would say so you know you've heard about bickles bon voyage here on racing america when we come back we're going to talk to mark wimberly with making memories travel there's a lot of alliteration here mm -hmm. and i'm doing very well right now so we'll continue and talk to Mark about Pickles Bon Voyage with Making Memories Travel. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety, providing the most advanced driver safety products to NASCAR, IndyCar, sprint cars, and sports cars drivers. From grassroots to professional racers, HMS Motorsport has over 25 years experience outfitting drivers with the best gear on the market. Equipped with first-hand product knowledge, our experts are ready to help you select the best harness belt, seats, head restraints, helmets, and racing attire for your type of racing. HMS is even the exclusive importer for Schrode belts, shoe Hubert Helmets, and Valero Base Layers. Visit one of our stores in Mooresville, North Carolina, or Danvers, Massachusetts. Or check us online at hmsmotorsport.com, where you can learn the details of our products and order online. Safety starts here. Hey gang, join Scott Hanson, and myself, and a host of other drivers on what will be the largest short track party at sea. Sail Eastern Caribbean on the Norwegian Iron Court January 7th to the 14th of 2024. Enjoy unlimited drinks, a special question and answer session, and have a chance at racing Scott and myself on the go Prairie track. Call Mark at Memories Travel at 262-527-1341 or visit MyMMTravel.com and click on the link to Bickles Bon Voyage link for information. SRI Performance and Stock Car Steel are your all-inclusive motorsports warehouses with more than 450 product lines. They have everything to put you in victory lane, from professional racing to street performance. SRI and Stock Car Steel have you covered with leading brands as well as a large selection of steel, aluminum, and plastics. With locations in North Carolina and Indiana, access has never been easier. SRI has the world's largest inventory of used parts. SRI Performance in Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, your one-stop shops for everything racing. You're watching Racing America. Welcome back to the Bull Ring with Jess Ballard and Alan Dietz. And our sponsor spotlight today is... Bickles Bon Voyage and our friends with Making Memories Travel. Joining us now from Making Memories Travel is Mark Wimberly. And Mark, is this deja vu? I feel like we were doing this two years ago and then we just, it just fizzled out because of COVID. That's correct. This is a reconstitution of Rich's retirement party, two years delayed uh, due to COVID. 
Uh, all of the restrictions are lifted now. And after conferring with Rich, we decided to continue with the cruise. We're going to do it January 7th through the 14th of 2024. Well, I'm pretty sure with some of that stuff that uh, Rich drinks, there's no way COVID or anything else could get into his body and survive. No, nah, he's a, he's a Miller Lite guy, so <laughs> he's, he's, it's pretty lightweight for that. <laughs> But we've we've made a couple twists. We've added Scott Hansen to the uh, mix as well. So we have Scott Hansen joining us. Um, there's a car owner that's from down south that's joining us as well. A couple other local short track drivers up here from the Wisconsin area going. Uh, right now we're sitting roughly 60 cabins sold. Uh, and we haven't even started marketing with you guys yet. So we're anticipating it to go well north of 100. I mean, this is such a fun idea. Like, it's so unique. And just so, so you know, Scott Hansen is not the guy who's saying mm bop. So, mm bop. That, that, right, that's, that's, that's different Hansen brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that Hansen, that's a serial killer, right? Maybe, Manson. but not Scott Hansen. Okay. Oh, yeah, Manson. I digress. Charles Manson. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, Wisconsin's got their their Dom, that's Dahmer serial killer country. That's up right. There. He spent a little time yeah. in Ohio and then went back up there. Yeah, got hungry. <laughs> okay, so anyway, this is a it's so rich to yeah. to do something like this. This is going to be such a party, and I'm so glad that y'all are able to make this happen after having to put a pause on it. Where did this idea come from? Like. Who? How does one come up with doing a retirement cruise? Well, this is this was my evil brainchild, I guess. I've known Rich, God, going on forty years now, and actually known him. I've been married thirty six years, and I invited him to our wedding. So that's just how long I've known him. Um, I thought of you know this might be a cool way to send him out on top. You know, unfortunately, it didn't work the year it was supposed to. And as soon as I proposed it to him, he thought maybe two seconds about it. He goes, yes, I'm in. And it just took off from there. We did a, a whole summer's worth of promotion up here. And um, we're sponsoring the flag at the Milwaukee Mile for the Midwest Truck Series under Bickles Bon Voyage. And we've just been doing a bunch of different things to help kind of promote it. And now with you guys and your help, I'm looking forward to it taking off. And he he. I had actually brought it up to him about doing an all-inclusive, and he said, no, he wants to stick with the cruise. So and where else are you going to get a go-kart track that you can put drivers on? You know, the ship has 18 bars, 16 different restaurants on it. It's an all-inclusive type cruise. Your air can be included depending on where you fly from. Uh, each market's a little different, but if you want to fly from Charlotte, you can. If you want to fly from upstate New York, you can. If you want to fly from out west to Miami, you can. Uh, and all roughly you're looking at, uh, about $3,500 per couple for a balcony. And that includes all your taxes, gratuities, everything out the door. Yeah. And that's great for cruises, especially being all inclusive. And I actually like this cruise better because the other one didn't have a go-kart track. <laughs> no, it did. It had a go-kart oh, track. Did it? This one's just, it did. This one's just bigger. It's the uh, bigger go-kart track. It um, was short track versus like super yeah, speedway. Yeah, that's right. So if people go to makingmemoriestravel.com, uh, what do they need to look for? And again, can you give us the uh, the dates on the cruise again? Yeah, the dates are January 7th through the 14th of 2024. The website is mymmtravel.com. So that's mymmtravel.com. And there will be a link on there. For Bickles Bon Voyage. Well, Mark, we can't wait. I think, uh, like I said, I, I think we should do a show from there. Maybe the last show we ever do, but it would definitely be interesting to watch. It could be our retirement you. show it as well. It would be our retirement well, show. We, we, what we could do is we could uh, put a table up when the show starts. And as we drink the beer, we can stack the cans up and we can take a look at where we're at when the show's over. Well, I'm just going to tell you. Um, it would be a very interesting show. And like I said, it may be the last one that we ever do, but it would be a very interesting show. And I think you should talk to our managers about that. But with that being said, Mark, 
thanks for joining us we look forward to the cruise and uh can't wait to to see how it feels in as the year goes in you guys are more than welcome i'm glad to be on board again uh, any questions have ever have them go up to my website myMmtravel.com and uh, shoot me a message on there and we'll get back to you as soon as we can yes sir thanks mark you're welcome have a good day guys you too when we yeah, come back, we're going to talk to Josh Berry about his great run at Richmond in the NASCAR Cup Series. That's got to be the wildest ride in the world. To say he started off the season in dominating fashion would be an understatement. What creates a winning combination? Quality, focus, discipline, and most importantly, speed. At Pepper Jack Kennels, we provide exceptional water and land training services for hardworking retrievers. From leading in the field to leading on the track, together we establish winning dogs and a winning team. Devoted to retrievers and motorsports, we are Pepper Jack Kennels. Visit us online to learn more. Women owned and manufactured in South Carolina, PFC Brakes is the number one choice for motorsports, fleets, auto manufacturers, and first responders. PFC delivers the best brakes on the market, guaranteed to outlast and outperform the competition. If you're looking to win at the track or reduce downtime for your fleet, or just need more stopping power when towing your boat or trailer, look no further than PFC Brakes. Visit us at pfcbrakes.com to find your local PFC Brakes distributor today. PFC Brakes are bred to win from the track to the job site. No compromises. Racing returns to the legendary Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. The 49th running of the Icebreaker. See past Super Lake Bottle hit the track. It's one of the area's oldest modified traditions, the Icebreaker, paying $10,000 to win for the ground pounding modified. It's the 49th annual Icebreaker at Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. And you can watch it all only on Racing America. Welcome to the new home for race fans, Racing America. Live short track racing. Exclusive team content. <laughs> Any NASCAR fan is really a short track fan at heart. Behind the scenes access. From grassroots to NASCAR, join us at the home for race fans everywhere. Racing America, it's in our DNA. Glad to have you back with us here on the Bull Ring, presented by Bickles Bond Voyage. Alan and Jess here with you this afternoon. And, you know, the road to the Cup this year for the Napa team uh, looked a, looks it, a little different. Look, it looks a little bit different. Uh, different crew chief right now and different driver, but similar results. Josh Berry joining us now. And, Josh, we're always so glad to, to have you on to talk about the the short track stuff and things like that. But I just had to get you on this week to, to talk about that great run at Richmond. Uh, congratulations. Just, uh, wh what have the last few days been like, you know, for you and the team since then? Yeah, no, that was really cool. Obviously to, uh, be able to just get an opportunity in the cup series. I mean, it's such weird circumstances, right? I mean, we, we hate that, you know, chase is, is injured and out of his, out of his race car, but, you know, it's opened up a great opportunity for me to to fill in for him for a few weeks here. And uh, it's given me a great opportunity in the Cup Series to, you know, work with a really, really strong team and, and a great group of guys. And, um, you know, it's been it's been a lot of fun. It's been definitely it's been a learning experience. Um, but I think, you know, all in all, we've handled it pretty well. Um, our first race was a little little bit of a challenge. Um, obviously, it was last second and uh, we had an issue in the car issue with the car throughout the race that kind of held us back but you know ever since then you know when we've had a little bit more time to wrap our heads around you know this opportunity i think you know all the races have been pretty good pretty decent i mean this is just crazy to think just a few years ago you were racing in in the short track ranks and had never made a nascar start and now you have a, a runner-up finish in the nascar cup series like 
crazy. And it's one of those stories that all the short track racers and I think the NASCAR folks mm-hmm. really love to follow. Um, so has it, it's been a few years. How, has it set in yet? Or are you still like, wow, I can't believe this is happening? Or are you totally chill about it now? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, you know, it's been uh, just crazy, really, when you think about it. I think I said, uh, I told that, I said something that uh, I can't remember who it was, whether it was my race team on the eight or the nine team. You know, three years, basically three years ago, um, you know, I was going for the weekly series national championship. Um, and we raced a lot at, we raced a handful of times at Dominion and Langley, which is really kind of close to, to Richmond. And to think in three years, I went from doing that and, and accomplishing that goal and, and to now stepping into a, a cup car for Hendrick Motorsports. Um, that was, I think that was even before, before the race, I think it's just been a, just incredible, incredible experience over the last three years. I mean, just, I can't it's just really hard to wrap my head around how much my life's changed and just my goals have changed and what I do daily is completely different. So it's just, it's just been amazing. I mean, it, you know, I'm, I'm still believe in the, you know, the American dream and that racing, you know, guys like me can get opportunities and, and work and find, find ways in, in racing. And, you know, so far it's been proven true. Um, you know, not really having any cup car experience prior to to this year. For you, what's the transition been like from an Xfinity car to this generation cup car? Yeah, it's it's a lot different. Everything's different. I mean, you know, it's just it's kind of hard to just single out, you know, what is so substantially different because the car mechanically is entirely different. I mean, it has independent suspension. It's coilovers, it's rack and pinion steering, it, you know, fuel injection. Um, you know, the difference from like, a, you know, a standard Xfinity car to, you know, what, you know, what cup used to be or what a late mall stock or something would be. I mean, it's so different that it's hard to even compare. Um, they're on a different tire, you know, smaller sidewall. That rack's a little bit different. And, you know, but I, I think the biggest difference between you know, cup racing and, and even Xfinity racing, it's just the level of competition. I mean, you have such great teams and drivers and they're all very good and people don't realize that's why you hear these guys talk so much about, um, you know, how hard it is to pass and track position and these things, all that's created because everybody's so equal. Um, I think that that's really what stands out to me. You can't make mistakes. You gotta, you know, you gotta keep your head in it all day and and just maximize, you know, each run and each pit stop pit cycle. It's, uh, it's been a, you know, experience too, but I think, um, you know, I'm kind of at the, I'm proven to myself throughout this that I I think I can do it. And, and I think that that's going to mean a lot to me personally, whenever this is over with. And, you know, to take you even back farther in your journey, some people may forget that, you know, you're a Tennessee guy. Now, you know, you go from racing at places like Kingsport right there at Bristol to racing at Bristol this weekend in a cup car. I mean, it's just a, it's an amazing full circle journey. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it's amazing to think about really the transition that I've had. Cause I mean, it's just so unique. Um, in the fact that I've spent, you know, spent basically a decade racing late model stocks. Um, and just, it's just kind of crazy that you get that far in along and then, and this all materializes, you know, when I'm, you know, 30, 31, 32 years old. Um, you know, I think that it's a fun, you know, this is kind of a funny story that I've told before, but you know, a year, a couple years ago, um, you know, I think a lot of Matt McCall, He's a very accomplished late model stock guy. And, you know, he went and started, you know, working in NASCAR and is now a cup crew chief. And uh, I went up to him at Southern National. This is probably like four or five years ago. And I'm like, hey, I'm like, how did you know when it was time to maybe like stop racing and and try to work into a position, you know, because I have a family, you know, that's, that's always was in the back of my mind was like, you know, should I do something else to make a better living and and. He was like, um, he was like, I, my date was when I was 30 years old and 
actually on my 30th birthday was when they they surprised me they surprised me with the opportunity to drive the eight car uh part-time in, in 21 so it's kind of just crazy circumstances really that is just i mean that is just crazy the it coincidence is. real quick any late model races on the schedule for 2023 for you not exactly yet um you know everything obviously going on the last month you know it's kind of put a halt to any any sort of you know extra extracurricular activities like that um but you now i'm looking at it honestly i have a couple um you know at least maybe the the asa race at hickory is something that i i'm really interested in it's a midweek show right before charlotte i think uh, that's something that i'm kind of looking at doing and then obviously i'm sure we'll have opportunity to, to take the late model stock and and go race it a couple times throughout the summer um you know obviously dale dale competing at wilkesboro uh in the car show race again that's gonna i'm gonna shoulder some responsibilities with that with that deal and 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 that's a pretty big focus of ours and and mine you know really you know once we get to may to just make sure we got all our ducks in a row for him to have a good experience there so once we get that over with we'll probably look at the schedule and try to find a couple races that we can go do well there's a lot of short trackers living vicariously through you and uh and pulling for you uh again congratulations for the great run at richmond good luck at bristol and uh we hope to talk to you again real soon yeah thank you man all right that's josh perry when we come back we're going to talk to tim bryant about some pro late model racing at five flags this weekend Ready to take your brand to the next level? At Victory Lane Design, we can help. If you are looking for a professional website, cutting edge logo, a hero card that separates you from the pack, or video production to keep you connected with your fans, then check out VictoryLaneDesign.com where winning counts. Five Star Bodies, the most advanced bodies on the market. Aerodynamically engineered, manufactured from the highest grade and lightest weight materials. Tested tough for optimum performance. The highest quality and most durable products you'll find anywhere. Our products help racers around the world reach victory lane. Winning never looked so good. Faster, lighter, stronger, better. Five Star. Hey gang, join Scott Hansen, myself, and a host of other drivers on what will be the largest short track party at sea. Sail Eastern Caribbean on the Norwegian Encore January 7th to the 14th of 2024. Enjoy unlimited drinks, a special question and answer session, and have a chance at racing Scott and myself on the go kart track. Call Mark at Memories Travel at 262-527-1341 or visit mymmtravel.com and click on the link to Bickle's Bon Voyage link for information. Racing returns to the legendary Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. The 49th running of the Icebreaker. See past Super Lake Bottle hit the track. It's one of the area's oldest modified traditions, the Icebreaker, paying $10,000 to win for the ground pounding modified. It's the 49th annual Icebreaker at Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. And you can watch it all only on Racing America. Welcome back, everybody, to the Bull Ring, presented by Bickles Bon Voyage. I'm Alan Dietz, along with Jess Ballard, who loves my struggle with alliteration <laughs> and the English language as a whole. And you know, uh, someone who is going to be pounding a lot of pavement <laughs> in the next few weeks is Tim Bright. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Five Flags this weekend, Montgomery Southern National Tim, uh, thanks for joining us, and I can't believe it, but this is the first time the Pro Late Models have raced at Five Flags this year. Yeah, it sure is. I'll tell you, there's uh, just a lot of a great racing going on in the short track world, Alan, and and I've always said, and uh, you know, a, a, a lot of our fellow promoters will agree, making schedules is harder than it's ever been, and there's just there's 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 a lot of good racing, a lot of good race tracks, uh, a lot of good series but there still is not any extra weeks put on that calendar every month. 
So uh, it's uh, it's hard to find dates that don't conflict. And uh, as as it would be as you know, working with all the other promoters, especially in in the pro late model ranks, why you know this was the first weekend that we had available, and and you know we're we're excited about it. The Alan Turner Road to the Snowflake series, we call it. There'll be four of these races throughout the summer, and uh, and then it'll all culminate with the Alan Turner Snowflake 100 uh, in December. Well, I feel like for the most part. Y'all have done a great job with the scheduling. I mean, you got drivers that can compete in multiple different national series, multiple different divisions at different tracks. Yeah, You guys have done a great job. I have always wondered, do you guys like all hop on a Zoom call like in the off season and like hash this all out the, at the beginning <laughs> of the year? Like, how do you guys like work with each other? Being I'm laughing because I know country? the answer to that. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, what's funny, I, I, Jess, that's a great question. And, you know, the very most productive meeting we've ever had, uh, we had uh, uh, Fairground Speedway Nashville, uh, Watermelon Capital at uh, 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 Cordell, uh, Five Flag Speedway, uh, and I'm leaving somebody out. But we all met in Montgomery, Alabama, and Stan Nairson's office at Montgomery Motor Speedway. And, uh, and we made our, our prolate model schedule a couple of years ago. Now, we didn't have the luxury of being able to uh, have that time or it just didn't uh, work out this year where we were able to do that. But, yeah, Zoom is, is a great thing. And so we did. You're exactly right. We did Zoom calls uh, talking about schedules and, uh, uh, you know, where somebody might have had a conflict. And a lot of times, you know, it's not necessarily a, a, a racing conflict. If, 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 if a date that's good for us or in, in everybody else's eyes, uh, is what lands here, and it's a bad date in our area. Uh, then we have to go back and and see if if anybody has any any give and take. But uh, uh, for the most part, we you know we 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 just got a great group of people that we're working with in our region, and uh, it it all works out in the end. Um, thinking about the super late models a little bit, the ASA Southern Super Series hits the track again April fifteenth at Montgomery. And we're glad to announce that that race will be a uh, part of Short Track America on MAV TV. And you guys uh, have added a date at Southern National during the summer, so uh, it's it continues to to stay busy throughout the year. Well, it does, Alan, and I mean, you know, we're 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 just more excited than we've ever been about our uh, ASA Southern Super Series schedule. Uh, of course, after after Montgomery. We'll have a little bit of a break on the regional side. Of course, there's a national stars national event at at uh, uh, Greg McCarn's uh, Madison International Raceway uh, on May seventh. But our next Southern Super Series race will be in conjunction with the Stars Tour at North Wilkesboro. That'll be a Tuesday night race, and then uh, uh, just about ten days later, uh, we'll be at Hickory Motor Speedway for the first time ever uh, for a Thursday night race. Um, that takes us kind of into the into the summertime. Uh, and we um, uh, had a race scheduled at Carteret County Speedway. We're really looking forward to, to going there. And uh, and then with the opportunity with uh, uh, came up after our postponement, unfortunately, at, at Cordell this past weekend, um, you know, we, we didn't really want to lose any races. And Michael Diaz has been a real trooper. He uh, has had interest in having the Southern Super Series race at Southern National for a couple of years. And and, you know, for for reasons beyond anyone's control, it just hasn't worked out. So this kind of opened it up. He was all about having a, a midweek race. So uh, we're going to be on uh, at Southern National Motorsports Park on on Thursday night, June the 22nd. And then uh, then we'll leave there and go over to, to Carteret County. Uh, we'll have a practice session on Friday and a race there on Saturday night. So the, the teams really like it. At the end of the day, this is what it's all about is trying to accommodate the race teams. But they like the idea of with travel costs being what they are, being able to hit two races uh, within a, a short distance of each other on the same weekend. Well, that's such a long haul for all the teams. I mean, even if you're in Charlotte, to be able to get two races in three days, I, I really and honestly think that that's going to work out great. Um, Tim, we can't wait to, to see the pros finally get on track on Friday and uh, and see the ASA Southern Super Series back in action at Montgomery. Well, we're excited to uh, uh, Dylan Fetcho coming off a big win uh, Saturday night at the fairgrounds in Nashville uh, comes in as our defending Alan Turner Pro Late Model Series champion. Uh, we've got a, a, a stellar field of cars, uh, including guys like Augie Grill and, 
and Matt Craig and 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 the list goes on. So uh, we're going to have us a good race here Friday night. And we can't wait to get started. All right. Thanks, Tim. Thank you, guys. All right. And you can watch that if you're not down in the Gulf area here on Racing America. When we come back, we're going to tell you about some other races you can watch this weekend. Welcome to the new home for race fans, Racing America. Live short track racing. Exclusive team content. <laughs> Any NASCAR fan is really a short track fan at heart. Behind the scenes access. From grassroots to NASCAR, join us at the home for race fans everywhere. Racing America, it's in our DNA. SRI Performance and Stock Car Steel are your all-inclusive motorsports warehouses with more than 450 product lines. They have everything to put you in victory lane, from professional racing to street performance. SRI and Stock Car Steel have you covered with leading brands as well as a large selection of steel, aluminum, and plastics. With locations in North Carolina and Indiana, access has never been easier. SRI has the world's largest inventory of used parts. SRI Performance in Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, your one-stop shop for everything racing. Hey gang, join Scott Hanson, myself, and a host of other drivers on what will be the largest short track party at sea. Sail Eastern Caribbean on the Norwegian Encore January 7th to the 14th of 2024. Enjoy unlimited drinks, a special question and answer session, and have a chance at racing Scott and myself on the go Crate track. Call Mark at Memories Travel at 262-527-1341 or visit mymmtravel.com and click on the link to Bickles Bon Voyage link for information. Ready to take your brand to the next level? At Victory Lane Design, we can help. If you are looking for a professional website, cutting edge logo, a hero card that separates you from the pack, or video production to keep you connected with your fans, then check out VictoryLaneDesign.com, where winning counts. Welcome back, everybody. And, you know, I've never said this before on the show, but it's going to be a busy weekend on Racing America. Did you know that? I'm seeing here that it is. It is going to be I a busy. Confirm. It is going to be a busy weekend at Racing America, especially with the postponement last week of the icebreaker at Thompson. We'll tell you more about that. But before we do that, we talked to a few past drivers and got their thoughts heading to Thompson on Saturday. It's rough. Uh, the place is getting really bumpy now. It's almost like this place uh, with the bumps, but you know it's it's really fast and it's got a high bank in and multiple groove racetrack you'll be able to pass really good and see some good side-by-side -side racing there i don't know you just kind of have an act for it if you like it you like it if you don't you don't fortunately i i enjoy that track so i have a lot of fun going there uh i mean expectations always to get a trophy uh you know that's uh, that's what we come to do we don't come to run anything less than that but uh you know that'll be a, a real real big learning experience for us you know never been on a racetrack that size so that's going to be that's going to be an undertaking, and uh, hopefully we'll just be able to get comfortable and have a good day. Well, as we mentioned, now the icebreaker moves to a two-day show, Friday and Saturday after being postponed last week. Uh, you'll be able to catch it all here on Racing America. If you haven't purchased your pay-per-view coverage, please do so now at racingamerica.tv. On Friday, you'll be able to see open street stocks, the mighty mini stocks, Thompson late models, Sunoco modifieds, and the pro trucks. That in and of itself is a great show to me. And then on Saturday, you'll get to see the past super late models. They'll race for 75 laps. The traditional icebreaker for the open modifieds, that'll be 125 laps, $10,000 to win, and more divisions again that's friday and saturday here on racingamerica.tv order your pay-per-view coverage now as we mentioned just uh this pro lake models for the first time this season will hit the track at five flags the alan turner pro lake models and uh based on what tim bryant was telling us sound like it's going to be uh another yeah. stacked field of pro late models yeah just like we talked about with nashville these local races are kind of 
we say it about the the supers, but really the the prolate models are like a mini snowflake. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's going to build to the snowflake as we go through the year. And that's not all. On Saturday, we'll continue to stay down in Florida. We'll be back at Citrus County Speedway for the first time in a while for the Southern Outlaw Winged Sprint Cars. And while I'm uh, thinking about it, um, while you're ordering your pay-per-view coverage of the icebreaker from Thompson, uh, you can also order your pay-per-view coverage of the Northeast Classic at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, past super late models, act late models, uh, tour type modifieds, mini stocks, street stocks, uh, pro trucks, I think are going to be there. That is just going to be another great weekend of action. And as I say, for you folks who gripe about pay-per-view, I understand that. But the reason we do that on these bigger events is a partnership between us and the promoters. And it's, it helps to provide the coverage and, uh, to to offset some of these costs that go to to put on these big races, and there are big costs. Right, they are, and the tracks benefit from, you know, that partnership. Yeah, I mean, how it's, how it's it's set up in a way that, you know, the tracks are being taken care of, and it and it, it's it's going back to the right place. It is, it is. So when you purchase your pay per view coverage, that basically is your e ticket to yeah to to get into the grandstands, if you will. Um, hopefully if you're in New Hampshire though, or, uh, Thompson this weekend, get out there and watch those races. They're really going to be good. Um, and, uh, you can, if you don't know how to do that, our pay-per-view instructional is on racingamerica.tv and you did a good job with that and you'll take everybody right through beginning to end how to order their pay-per-view coverage on various devices. We posted that. I thought that mm-hmm. was just for my mom. <laughs> No, we posted it, and you did a very well, nice if, job. If my mom can figure it out, y'all can figure it out. That's Watch right. Watch my video. That's the pay-per-view <laughs> video. Yes. Okay. All right. When we come back, we'll wrap up another boring right after this. Racing returns to the legendary Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. The 49th running of the Icebreaker. See past Super Late Models hit the track. It's one of the area's oldest modified traditions. The Icebreaker, paying $10,000 to win for the ground pounding modified. It's the 49th annual Icebreaker at Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. And you can watch it all only on Racing America. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety, providing the most advanced driver safety products to NASCAR, IndyCar, Sprint Cars, and Sports Cars drivers. From grassroots to professional racers, HMS Motorsport has over 25 years experience outfitting drivers with the best gear on the market. Equipped with first-hand product knowledge, our experts are ready to help you select the best harness belts, seats, head restraints, helmets, and racing attire for your type of racing. HMS is even the exclusive importer for Schrode belts, Schubert helmets and Valero base layers. Visit one of our stores in Mooresville, North Carolina or Danvers, Massachusetts or check us online at hmsmotorsport.com where you can learn the details of our products and order online. Safety starts here. Well, the white flag is out on another episode of the Bull Ring. I want to thank our guest today, Jonathan Davenport, as well as Dylan Fetcho, Mark Wimberly, Josh Berry, and Tim Bryant. If you missed any of today's show, 
You can go back and watch on RacingAmerica.tv and watch that on demand. And don't forget for the Bull Ring and uh, lots of other great content uh, on select connected devices for free. You can get the Racing America channel 24 7, get to see great racing and all the shows that make up uh, make up Racing America. Busy weekend, as we mentioned. Uh, you got Thompson, um, Citrus County, Five Flags, and the dirt racing from Bristol uh, that you can watch as well. So it's a, a great weekend for some short track racing. For sure. I was looking at the schedule and I was like, hmm, why is there nothing going on on Sunday? Is it Easter? It is Easter, but the cup race is Sunday. Well, we didn't have that on our short track racing. Uh, well, section. go hide your Easter eggs and then get back and watch the cup race on uh, Sunday. And happy Easter. Yes, and remember the reason for the season. <laughs> so for Jess, I'm Alan Deet saying so long from here in Charlotte. And we'll see you back here next week. On, oh, before I say goodbye. Don't forget, you can check uh, check out tomorrow, Jess and uh, Keely Dubinsky, Cars Tour Weekly. That's Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, right here, or BasicAmerica.tv. So now for Jess, I'm Alan, saying so long, and we'll see you next week. Hey gang, join Scott Hansen, myself, and a host of other drivers on what will be the largest short track party at sea. Sail Eastern Caribbean on the Norwegian Encore January 7th to the 14th of 2024. Enjoy unlimited drinks, a special question and answer session, and have a chance at racing Scott and myself on the go track. Call Market Memories Travel at 262 527 1341 or visit mymmtravel.com and click on the link to Bickles Bon Voyage link for information. Hey gang, join Scott Hansen, myself, and a host of other drivers on what will be the largest short track party at sea. Sail Eastern Caribbean on the Norwegian Encore January 7th to the 14th of 2024. Enjoy unlimited drinks, a special question and answer session, and have a chance at racing Scott and myself on the go Train track. Call Market Memories Travel at 262-527-1341 or visit mymmtravel.com and click on the link to Bickles Bon Voyage link for information. Right now, racing, in my opinion, is as healthy as it's been in the last 15 to 20 years. Just wanted to make that first lap. Go! Go. <laughs> racing returns to the legendary Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. The 49th running of the Icebreaker. See past Super Lake Bottle hit the track. It's one of the area's oldest modified traditions, the Icebreaker, paying $10,000 to win for the ground pounding modified. It's the 49th annual Icebreaker at Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park, and you can watch it all 